good, man. Tim's who about to beat the shit out of Brian, Brian Mendoza. I almost said his name wrong. Prediction time. 12 round. WBO title on the line. 154-pound division. Tim Zhu been elevated because Jamel Charlo went up and fought Canelo. They stripped his ass and made Tim Zhu the full-time champion. Let's see what he do with it in his first title defense. You know what I'm talking about? Tim Zhu, 28 years old, orthodox fighter out of Australia. 5'8", 72-inch arm reach, 23-0 with 17 knockouts. Brian Mendoza, 5'10", 70-inch arm reach, 29 years old, orthodox fighter out of New Mexico. I can't believe I didn't write down this record. Let's find it out real time. In the meantime, subscribe to the channel, smash the like button, and don't forget I'm live Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday night at 7.30. You can also catch me live every Sunday morning with the singing OG, KQKC Boxing Network, Sunday mornings, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. And please join the channel as a member for access to exclusive content. And, um, you know, drop them super chats and them super thanks when you come by these videos and these live streams. Brian Mendoza, 22 wins, 2 losses, 16 wins by way of knockout. That's his record. Now let's get to it. Look, man, this is your classic boxer puncher, pressure fighter puncher matchup. You got Brian Mendoza as the, as the boxer puncher. Going to be looking to um, walk Tim Zhu in the shots, counter punch, look to land his shots. Um and and really use that back footed counter punching approach and then sit down on some of the Tim's who don't see coming then bye fight over with fight over with that how he fight ask Jason Rosario who he retired ask Sebastian Fundora who he just stopped he's very confident right now coming off two huge wins for his career to put him in this position and I gotta give Brian Mendoza credit for going over to Australia to make this fight happen with Tim Zhu. He could rest on his laurels as a WBC interim champion, wait on them to either strip Jamel Charlo, try to get a Jamel Charlo fight himself, but he going straight for the smoke. And I'm sorry, he done been in the ring with Jesus Ramos, Sebastian Fundora, Jason Rosario. Brian Mendoza deserves our respect and our credit. And by all accounts, he fully dedicated, been in the gym nonstop, and he ready for this moment. Tim Zhu. Making a name for itself. I always tell anybody um, that when I'm talking about Tim Zhu, you ain't got to like him. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to be a fan of his. What I like about him is he went to where the smoke is at. And he building his own name. And when Jamel Charlo decided to go fight Canelo, when Jamel Charlo decided, or not decided, when he got hurt, Tim Zhu just stayed the course. And he continues to just fight competition to the point to where now you can call him an email champion because he didn't take the belt off of Charlo. Charlo got stripped. You can call him whatever you want to call him. You know what we call fighters when they get elevated because the champion don't fight them. We like to act like it's the person who got elevated fault. No problem. No problem. But he about to put some real weight on that belt. If he beat Brian Mendoza, he putting some real weight on that belt, Tim Zoo. And what I say about him is with the name of his daddy, Costa Zoo. He could have did anything when he came over here to America, bro. He could have went to the zone, top rank love to have him, and he could just fight, you know what I'm saying, tomato cans and lesser opponents and just pad his resume. The moment he built his name up, he looked to where the smoke was at, and he went straight after. He said, y'all run 154, that's where I'm coming. So I got to give him credit and respect for that. With that being said, he's the pressure fighter with the power in this equation. Looking to come forward. Good hand speed, slip shots to throw counter punches, goes to the body well, and he's just relentless. Think think David Benavidez, a little less combination punching, a little less hand speed, but coming forward, mauling you nonstop, looking to do something to you um, and just beat you up behind some counter punching, leading sometimes. And think of David Benavidez as in the same flaws too, can get squared up. Defense isn't the best. He tries to have an active high guard, but it ain't active enough. Goucher was able to drop him early in their fight. Now, he came back and put an ass whooping on Goucher. But his defense does leave a lot to be lacking. It is something that he needs to work on. But if you can't find a way to get his, get his respect, and I even say this, Goucher put him down and clearly had him wobble, and he just kept coming. So it seemed like that he's somebody that you really might have to stop to keep him up off your ass. Because Tim Zhu looking like a real dog. Um, path to victory in this fight, 
Brian Mendoza, I feel like he got to stop Tim Zhu. Number one, the ring is going to be in Tim Zhu's favor. It's going to be a small-ass ring, so Brian Mendoza can't use too many pivots, can't back up too much. He, it's going to be the same type of ring Tony Harrison had to fight Tim Zhu in when he went over to Australia in Tim Zhu's last fight, bro. So get ready for that shit. Just know that it's coming. I'm talking about back step. You take a couple shuffles back, you're back on the ropes type shit. Uh, another thing is in Australia. Jeff Horn, Manny Pacquiao. We know how the Australians get down, bro. That motherfucker close. It's probably going to go to Tim Zoo being the A-side fighter, being the house fighter, being the one with the bigger name and shit like that. So Brian Mendoza, his path to victory to me, he going to have to walk Tim Zoo into some hot shit like he did Sebastian Fundora, get his ass hurt and go for the kill. That's his only way to victory. I don't think he's active enough, and he's already showed that he's so willing to take the back foot. He just naturally willing to take that back foot and try to walk you into some shit. And so I anticipate he's going to do the same thing with Tim Zhu. The question is, is he going to hit home? And when he do, can he hurt him? And then can he can he jump on him and finish him? For Tim Zhu, his path to victory is apply intelligent pressure. Brian Mendoza has had the tendency against Jesus Ramos. Jesus made him put his hands in his pocket. So if you can pressure him enough and you can land some shots on him, get your body shots off, he does tend to wait a little too long. And so you can get your work off as long as you Tim Zoo and you getting your work off to the, uh, you know, and then bringing your hands back to the proper position, minding your defense. You have an opportunity to outwork them. You have an opportunity to uh, win the fight that way. Um, and, and, and really, um, you know what I'm saying, make it clear for the judges that you're winning these exchanges and that he not letting his hands go, similar to how Jesus Ramos did him. Um, who I'm picking and why, I got to, Brian Mendoza has a shot to win this fight. But I think he has to have a the best performance of his career. I'm not saying he can't do that. I'm saying Sebastian Fundora, yes, Brian Mendoza stopped him. But Sebastian Fundora was whooping his ass before he did. Brian Mendoza doesn't do good against pressure fighters that just keep coming at you, pressing you. And while Fundora is very good offensively, he sucked defensively. Tim Zhu defense better than his. And Tim Zhu already showed he can get wobbled, he can get up, and he's going to keep coming. So I don't know if it's going to be as easy to stop him as it was Sebastian Fundora, who also probably had his code cracked by his code. I'm talking about his jaw. Probably had his jaw cracked against Erickson Lubin because Erickson Lubin was catching him clean, and that dude, that dude can punch. We know that. Um, so... The safe bet is Tim Zhu in this fight. I'm going with Tim Zhu just because everything in his favor. The ring, the size of the ring going to be in his favor. They're going to be fighting in a small-ass ring. That's going to favor the guy that want to that wanna fight inside, that want to put the pressure on, not the back-footed counterpuncher that's looking to walk you into the shot. He's fighting in his hometown. He's fighting in, in, in Australia. You get this shit where it's extremely competitive, it's extremely close. You got to think that because of the crowd, because of the politics of boxing, you got to think any swing rounds, any close rounds, Tim Zhu probably going to get the nod on those rounds. So, And Tim Zhu has the ability to just straight up stop Brian Mendoza or straight up beat him up for 12 rounds. So he can just win off of being the better fighter. So everything's in his favor. Winning by decision is in his favor if he go to the cards. Winning by knockout he can do. I think he can stop him late. Um, so, so Brian Mendoza, um, again, I don't want it to get misconstrued. He can definitely win this fight. Definitely has a shot to win this fight. However, I'm going with the safe pick. I'm going with the logical pick. Logic says pressure fighter, small ring, good enough defense, being able to slip and rip and counter punch and watching that counter puncher that he's going against put his hands in his pocket when he done felt real power before. Tim Zhu got real power. I anticipate Mendoza won't be as quick to look for those counters. He'll lose exchanges, lose rounds. He'll survive, though. I do have it going the distance, but I'm going with Tim Zoo in this fight by unanimous decision. Eight rounds to four, nine rounds to three. Looking for scorecards about 116, 112, 117, 111. Um, just because everything in his favor. And he's just a really good fighter, bro. He's a really good pressure fighter. So, y'all let me know what y'all think, man. I got Tim Zoo unanimous decision. 
if you're going stoppage, pick it late. I don't think Brian Mendoza, he's very good defensively, very reliable. Um, Tim Zhu is a dog as well. If you think somebody's going to get stopped, it'll probably be mid to late either way. Mid to late either way with late stoppage probably being the safer pick. But I'm going to go by unanimous decision for the young man, Tim Zhu. Y'all let me know who y'all picking. Comment below, smash your like, sub to the channel. Is that a great hair? God damn, I'm getting old. I'll see y'all soon, man. Peace out.